Hi everyone, welcome back. In this episode, we are going to be getting the Coltana. I've been playing this game since the beta, and you used to be able to just walk in here and pick up the Coltana. All you needed was antlion armor to survive the sizzle. But now, they've made it into a defensive end, which means when you go in here and you try to pull out the Coltana, you will trigger swarms of ladybird larvae to attack the sword and you have to defend it for a certain amount of time. At the end of that, you will get the recipe for the Coltana, not the Coltana itself. So they've definitely made it a lot harder, but I'm kind of glad about that because it's such a good weapon that if you could just walk in and pick it up, I don't think you'd appreciate it as much as you should. So let's have a go. So the Coltana is located in a charcoal bag in the barbecue spill biome. It is just next to the actual barbecue grill itself. You will need a full set of upgraded antlion armor to get anywhere near the Coltana because it's extremely hot in there, but I'll leave a full list of things you'll need in the description below. You might want to put up a ladybird larva mount outside the charcoal bag because activating that will give you 15 minute damage bonus against ladybird larva themselves. And I'm pretty sure you can't put the mount directly on the lamppost itself, so you'll need to build a wall. The next thing I'm going to do is buy Cooking 101 and the Cookbook Sandbox, because we're going to build a cookery so we can cook the quesadilla lion meal which also protects against sizzle damage. But I actually forgot to eat this before I started the defense event, so it's not that necessary. As long as you've got upgraded antlion armor, you should be okay. But if you do want that added sizzle protection, it only costs two antlion parts, six salt shards, and one spicy shard to make. So why not? I'm just gonna upgrade my antlion armor a bit more. I usually like to take my armor down the bulky route just because I want that added defense and I don't really like having to repair my armor again and again. So bulky is a little bit stronger, my preference. If you did want to take your armor down a sleek route though, it will reduce your thirst drain by 5%. So we're about to head in. I do recommend saving it before you go in because you're probably not going to do it on your first attempt. I know I didn't. Don't forget to activate the larva mount. And if you are like me and usually have natural explorer equipped when you're running around, take that off and put parry master on. I've got buff lungs, meat shield, parry master, cardio fan and fresh defense as my mutations. So when you get to the Coltana, hold down X or whatever your action button is and it will start the defense event. So you'll notice there are two health bars at the top of the screen now. One is the Coltana's health bar, that's the red one on the right. And the purple one on the left is the mastering secret. So once that gets to the end, you've got the Coltana recipe. So I'm using the Mint Mace, upgraded to level 5 or 6, I can't remember. If you don't have the Mint Mace already, I've got a video on that, so I'll put that in the description below. I find this weapon really effective against the Ladybird Larva, as they are weak to fresh. As you can see, it only takes about 3 hits to kill them. If you want to protect against sizzle damage even more, you could equip the Insulating Larva Spike, which is a trinket dropped from Ladybird Larva. It's got a 5% chance of dropping, and you can't get it from the Ladybird Larva during the event. I didn't get it before the event, but I did get it shortly after. I killed 46 Ladybird Larva to get the trinket. But as you can see, unless you're standing pretty much directly on top of the Coltana, you don't really sizzle that much. As long as you stay around the outer edges of the bag, your sizzle should go down quite quickly. Another thing you can do to protect against sizzle is to eat mint shards. Eating one shard takes your sizzle down by about half. 
But to be honest, for me, sizzle damage wasn't an issue. I never actually took sizzle damage throughout this whole event and I didn't have the insulating larva spike and I didn't eat the case of the ant lion meal either. So I don't think sizzle damage is that big of a problem. For me, the bigger problem was taking damage from the larva themselves. So you wanna make sure to time your blocks really well. You'll also want to bring lots of granola bars, fiber bandages, maybe some smoothies and heel bosses. Just make sure though if you're using the heel bossa that you don't accidentally heal the ladybird larva as well. For me, I mainly use granola bars, but if it was quiet like this, I would use a fiber bandage just to get some trickle regen. If you see a larva come out the ground, you'll want to try and get to them as quickly as possible so that they don't get to the coltana. In my experience, if they do see you, they will go for you first before they go for the coltana. Just make sure you're keeping an eye on your health though, because when you're fighting two or three at a time, it can be really easy to get carried away not check your health in them before you know it you're dead and you don't want to be dying when you're this close to the end i think this guy is the last larva before we get the recipe there we go and we did it and we've also unlocked the guard dog mutation which gives you extra attack damage during defense events phase one is 10 percent phase two is 25 percent and phase three is 50 percent so now we've got the recipe for the coltana, let's head home and see if we've got everything we need to make it. We can put two spicy globs on, no problem. We've got five Everchar coal chunks and we will need to kill a lot of tough bugs to get 10 tough gunk. Tough gunk is dropped by, surprise surprise, tough bugs. So we're talking roly polies, black ox beetles, termites, green shield bugs, ladybird larva, things like that. So I want to make the black ox crossbow at some point so I'm mainly going to kill black ox beetles but I'll also need to repair my roly-poly armor at some point as well so I'll kill a couple of roly-polies as well. In my experience, it's really hard to get tough gunk from ladybird larva. I had to kill quite a few just to get one piece. But when it comes to black ox beetles and roly polies, you seem to always get one, if not three. So back at home, our spicy globs are finished. So we should be able to make the coltana now. There we go. And let's head straight to the smithing station to upgrade it. It's a really good weapon, so I want to upgrade it as much as possible for now. So I've made some mighty globs so that I can upgrade it to level 6. Something really great about the Coltana is that when you use it to kill a weevil, aphid, gnat or something you can eat, it instantly cooks it. So instead of getting raw weevil meat, you get weevil roast. It's really useful when you're out and about and you don't have a spit roast but you need food and maybe you need a bit of health. Perfect. As you can see it's also quite useful in taking down mosquitoes which are weak to sloshing. Let's see how it fares against a wolf spider. I've been wanting to kill this spider for a while because it's guarding a milk molar at the oak tree but I never had the courage to try and kill him until I had my trusty Coltana. So I'm not doing great, but the Coltana is good enough that he's dead. And I can even take on an Orb Weaver as well. And I got the Phase 1 Mutagetism mutation as well, which is super super useful, especially if you're going to go fight the Broodmother or anything like that. So finally, I can get to my tooth. So that was actually the first wolf spider that I've killed in this game so far. So let's head back to the field station to analyze the fangs and the venom, which should hopefully give us a recipe for venom arrows. So I mentioned earlier that I wanted to craft the Black Ox crossbow, tier three crossbow. 
So for that, we will need pine cones and rust. So I'm in the upper grasslands here, in the northeast part of the map. And just behind the toolbox, we have a few pine cones lying around. They are quite tough, they do take a lot of bashing. You will need your tier 3 black ox hammer to break them. And also around the toolbox, there are some rusty nails lying around, which you will also need your black ox hammer for. And there we've got rust. So let's head home and craft the black ox crossbow and straight to the smithing station to upgrade it. And don't forget to analyze your pine cones and your rust. So that's given us a recipe for quite a lot and the brain power has also unlocked the rusty spear. And we'll get some raw signs from the rust as well. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe for more. Let me know how you got on with your Coltana event. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye!